right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1982 Renault 12 Routier. Up front is a 1.2 liter inline four. Down below is a four speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Renault R12 for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that I've only ever done one Renault before, a Le Car that I'll link at the end of this video, as well as the fact that this car was actually imported from Mexico. I think it has a pretty interesting story and I'm excited to share that with you today. This video was filmed in the beautiful sunshine state of Florida. If you would like like to submit your vehicle no matter where you are in the country please head on over to zackpradle.com where there's a quick and easy submission form and the next time i travel the country i might be coming to you but before we get back to the engine and drivetrain i'm not sure if this is called the renault r12 or just 12 it says just 12 on the car but everywhere i looked it was referred to as the r12 so from here on out I will be referring to it as the R12, even though it is just badged as the 12, just to clear up any little confusion. But like I said, up front is a 1.2 liter inline four. It doesn't make a whole lot of horsepower. It is carbureted and it's fine. The engine itself isn't really all that interesting. However, the way it's mounted is because this is a front wheel drive car, but the engine is mounted longitudinally like a rear wheel drive car, which is super, super unique. That means that the transmission is really jammed in there, making everything up front. It's actually a trans axle, which again is very, very strange, even for this little French car. It seems as though Renault can't do anything really that normal. Like I said about the drivetrain, that four speed manual transmission, and it's it's a slant pattern. If you notice on the actual knob itself, the lines aren't just an H, they're actually at a slant. Now the Renault Le Car that I drove last year also had the same pattern. And so far the only Renaults that I've driven have had this sort of pattern. It's a little weird to get used to, but at the end of the day, it's not that difficult. And of course, like I said about the drivetrain, it is front wheel drive. So how does the car drive? Well, it's a very boxy 80s economy vehicle. And honestly, it has roots going back even earlier than the 80s. If I had to compare it to something, I would honestly compare it to the Lada that I drove last summer out in California, the Lada 2106. It has that very light, but very economy feeling. Speaking of economy, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have have one gauge and a bunch of warning lights. Off to the left, I have my oil, fog light, and temperature lights. In the center, I do get a speedometer. Now this is in kilometers an hour because this vehicle was imported from Mexico and we'll talk about that with the final thoughts. And off to the right, I have battery and fuel, but then I also have warning lights for the choke, hazards, and what appears to be an old timey microphone and I guess louvers on the back of a car. I don't know what these lights mean and I couldn't find anything online. If you have any idea what what these are please let me know in the comments down below on the steering wheel i don't get anything it's a really thin steering wheel it has the renault logo in the center but of course no airbag and the horn itself is found on the stalk down below the steering wheel, I do have the choke because this is a carbureted vehicle. It does have a manual choke that you can engage. And I do get this nice little shelf down to the bottom left as well. And it spans over to in front of the passenger. It's really nice for holding any small objects. Moving out of the door, I have my latch get in and out, the handle, and the window crank. Very, very simple. Moving into the center, the simplicity continues with the heater controls. <laughs> As you can see here, not much to it. I do have a cigarette lighter and then I have the radio actually pushed off to the right. This is the original factory radio that came in the Renault back in 1982. I do of course have an opening ashtray because it is an 80s car, you gotta have that. And then I have this little cubby. Now the cubby is OEM to the Renault. However, a previous owner put a more modern stereo system in here to keep the interior looking nice, but still have modern tunes. Then we have the shifter itself. The shifter is mounted to the floor. However, it does feel good. It has that slant pattern, which is kind of funny. And overall, I actually really like the shifter feel. And of course, because that is the only center console we get, we don't have any cup holders. So the Renault R12 fails the big freaking bottle test. <laughs> Then we gotta talk about the seats. The seats have a very 1960s pattern to them. They're very nice cloth, but it looks like something a lot, lot older 
than the 1980s, which I find to be kind of interesting. However, it makes sense for this car. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the Renault 12, and it's not super spacious. My knees are hitting the seat in front of me. However, the seats are nice and bouncy, which is definitely nice to see. They're really well finished. I get this nice shelf back here. I can't imagine how many kids probably sat up here, babies laid back up here. In old cars, that's what you did. I don't get seat belts back here. So however many people can sit back here is however many people would fit back here. That's kind of fun to me. And I always heard stories back in the day of the rear shelf of cars you'd put your baby up there. You could fit more people that way. So that to me is super cool. And I'll talk about that towards my final thoughts, but it's just cool to be back here because I know probably a lot of viewers watching this video now grew up with a car like this. If you searched out this video, you probably are curious or remember this car in some type of way. And sitting back here, I really get to have that perspective, what it was like to be a kid growing up in Mexico, go into the store getting driven to school, maybe your dad picking you up after work, things like that. Really, really cool to see. I, of course, have crank windows, but also on that side, I get an ashtray. So still got your priorities. Let's go hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Renault 12, and a couple of things to note. First of all, I do need a separate key for the trunk. This is still of that era where two keys per car. However, I also want to note that there is a locking gas cap. This is where the gas cap is found. It's not on the side of the car. It's not breaking up these beautiful body lines. It's actually right here in the back, which I find interesting. Pop it up like this. And here we are in the trunk. Very, very basic, very bare bones. We do get a spare tire, which is pretty nice. And oh my gosh, smelling it, it smells like my Ford Model A. Oh my gosh, that just brought me back. Wow. Such a cool experience. I can't imagine all the things that have been put back here. And I love that. I love this little piece of history. Now we got to talk about the looks. And I love the look of the Renault R12. I think it looks really, really cool. Mainly because of the color. I love this color doing this walk around. Now, normally it is a little bit darker of a blue. It has been resprayed in a slightly lighter blue, which you could see the differences here. There's a little bit of paint chipping. That's the difference in blues, which honestly isn't even that much. However, one thing I want to talk about before we move past the exterior are the headlights. In almost every brochure and image of the Renault R12 that I found online, it had single square headlights or single rectangular headlights at the front instead of these dual circular ones. I'm not sure if this was for the Mexico market or what. If anyone has any info on that, please let me know. So with all that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving this Renault R12? 12 or 12, whatever you want to call it. Well, first of all, my thoughts are it drives fine. It's an all right car. It's not blowing me away with its performance or its styling or anything like that. What is blowing me away is the backstory, why this car is culturally important. Well, the R12 was actually originally sold also in the US. This particular car in this video was imported from Mexico. And that's important because Renault tried to establish themselves here in the United States, but they had a very small dealer network. People were a little uneasy about it being a French vehicle. We learned this all with the Le Car that I did last year. Renault did not have a good foothold in the US and they didn't stick around for too long. Although they were here since the 60s, by the 80s, they were pretty much going out of business until AMC picked them up and we know that story from there but this car wasn't sold here this particular one was sold in Mexico it's actually also where they were built and in Mexico they sold amazingly it was a cheap affordable car that people who didn't have all the money in the world could actually afford this was an average Joe's car this wasn't an executive's car this wasn't a higher up CEO's car this was a car for regular people and I think that is more culturally interesting than the Mercedes at the time than the Bentleys at the time because I Odds are, if you're watching this video and you seeked this video out through YouTube searches or pages or whatever, your parents might have had one 
Maybe you had a girlfriend in high school that drove one. Maybe you learned how to drive in one. Maybe you had a parent that drove you to soccer practice in one. And that to me is more important. This car has a story to tell in so many people's lives. And now they're gone off the roads for quite some time. Although Renault did make this up until the 2000s down in Mexico, of course, because they didn't require airbags. And I just love that it's an interesting look at a car's environment or really a product's environment or even, let's be honest, a person's environment is so important to their survival. You take this car and you put it in the American market. It's supposed to be an economy car and you put it up against other vehicles that are a lot smaller, a lot more affordable, and it doesn't swim, it sinks. But then you put it into a different market, a market that is looking for a larger economy vehicle, like Mexico. Mexico didn't have as many vehicular options as us Americans did at the time. We have always been spoiled here in the US by how many options we have for cars. Everyone always says, oh, cars are all the same. You have literally hundreds of options for cars every single year. In other countries, it's not quite like that. So this car was able to swim down in Mexico and swim it did. It sold ridiculously well. And so I just like to imagine, you know, with no seatbelts in the back, how many people they shoved in here and you know how many babies were put up on that rear parcel shelf behind the seats i know that was a thing here in the united states i'm sure it was a thing worldwide how many different experiences people had in a vehicle like this in cultures that i haven't had the privilege to visit yet that's what i love about this job that I have is that I also get to have a geography lesson, a cultural lesson while talking about the thing that I love, cars. This car was imported here to Florida from Mexico where it lived a full life of memories and trips and shopping runs and school runs. If this car could talk, I think it would have a couple of things to say. Huge thank you to Matt and Tim from Obscure Rides. Obscure Rides is absolutely awesome. They let me take this car out today. They have a bicycle shop as well as classic cars, and they're always doing something fun and interesting. If you're in the St. Augustine, Florida area, please go check them out. Their information is found in the description below. I cannot thank them enough. They've been absolutely awesome through this whole process, and they've been a huge asset to the channel, so please go show them some love. But I hope you guys enjoy the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it take care guys